Hi friends, it's Deanna here today and today we're going to be working on the geometric color block top. This is the curvy fit. Um, we're working on the curvy fit today. Um, I am actually wearing the straight fit and we're going to be, I'm going to be showing you the final results for the curvy fit and coming up on our next video, make sure you check it out. I will do the differences between the curvy and the straight fit for those of you who've got questions. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so one of the differences between the curvy and the straight is the fact that um, with the straight, I mean, I'm sorry, with the curvy we have a seam down the back which allows for that curvy fit, um, which is so nice. So we're going to start with that. So I'm going to grab my um, back bodice A and I'm going to put it right side up on my mat. As you can see, this is where my sleeve goes. This is my back seam. Um, so there's one. I guess it doesn't really matter which which side is on your mat because the only reason why I'm doing this is so that I can match up the bottoms, bottom the B, bodice B, to it and so that they match up because when I put them right side up, you'll see these two match up. See that? The line is complete right there and then these two match up because if I was to put this one there, obviously it's not going to match up. So then we're going to grab um, bodice A in back bodice A and I'm going to flip it right over and I'm going to put them right sides together at this back seam. This not, this is not the back seam, the middle seam. And we're going to go all the way right sides together to that edge right there. And you're going to have, you don't have to stretch or anything. You're going to have a little, like a quarter inch right here. You see that hanging off the edge. Um, and that is for ease of lining. That's for your um, seam allowance. So that way when it flips, it will align really nicely right here on the edge where that curve is. So we're going to sew that at the top together and we're going to do the same for the other side of the back. All right. So now that those sides are sewn together, the, well, the bodice top and back, one thing that will give your bodice always um, a really nice look is for you to steam your seams. You always want to steam your seams. It just makes things look nicer, more pulled together. So as you're sewing, um, as I'm sewing, I like to steam those seams because then once they're all put together, it's kind of harder to steam them. So I always like to steam them as I go. I know that sometimes I say that and I don't do it, but um, it literally changes the whole look. Um, I should have showed you before I steamed it. It looks kind of wavy and then after you steam it, look at how sharp and nice that looks. And then later I'll come back and I'll top stitch, like go up and down and I'll show you how I do that. Um, so then I'm, now that I've got my top and back, so my, my back bodice is basically put together, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my other side. So that was on one side, here's my other side. And we're gonna put it together at the back seam, right sides together. And right now, if you wanted to use like some wash away tape right here or something to make sure that those seam allowances match up really nicely right here or nest your seam is where you put one seam allowance going up and one seam allowance going down to kind of get it um, in there right at the edge where you need to get it. I am not very, um, what is the word? Um, I'm not a stickler for, um, like getting things to match up just right. Sometimes I feel like when I try really, really hard, they don't work out. And then when I just like, eh, they do end up working out. So I'm just like, I'm not even stressing about it. But you could also do, um, if you are really, like you really want that point to look really, really good so they're not misaligned, um, you could go over to your sewing machine and put a basting stitch right there too and then open it up and say, this looks really good, now I'm gonna sew it. Um, that would also be an idea for you to do or some, like I said, some wash away tape or something like that to keep that point really sharp right there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and sew up that back seam. Oh, after I sew up that back seam, I'm also going to, I'm going to steam that back seam and then I'm going to go over to my cover stitch and sew up these top stitch, these sides. Um, you can stop top stop. You can top stitch them beforehand or after. I do it after because I, I, um, what I do, I do a little trick where I turn my cover stitch so that then they're continuous. 
um, but if you don't have a cover stitch and you just want to do one this way and one this way and then they meet at the middle, you can do it that way too, which would be do sewing it before you sew the back. So as I mentioned, I'm going to be using my cover stitch to do my top stitching. Um, and what I do is I line it up on my, like the little feet, the little um, lines on the foot. When I get to the V, I stop at that seam. I lift my needles up a little bit. And then I push my, uh, my uh, presser my tension down so that I can move my thread, pull my thread just a tiny bit. I just pull it just a tiny bit so it can turn and then I keep going. And there is my V point. And I see how it looks kind of wavy. Once I steam it, all those waves will go away. All right, our back bodice is done. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a good steam right here where I top stitched, um, that way it See how nice that goes once you steam it? It gives it such smooth lines. So needed. How cute. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the front. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my front A, which is my top, as you can see, here's my V-neck. And I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew a basting stitch about an inch away from that center line to one side and then the other side. So, and with a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna start about an inch off and go up, stop at that point and go down. Um, your fabric tends to want to stretch sometimes when you're sewing it. Um, so this stay stitch will help that V stay, to, uh, that V point right there stay nice and straight. That way when you're sewing it, it gives you a really sharp V and um, you don't have to fuss with it too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. It's just a long straight stitch on my sewing machine. Um, my sewing machine goes up to a five on the straight stitch. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. All right, so my basting stitch is in. Um, that's just for holding its place, so you're gonna pull it out later, so don't worry about it being perfect or perfectly inch away from the edge, that's fine. Um, and then <laughs> make sure you're doing it to the right V, um, not to the neckline. I'm just, you know, telling you, not from experience or anything. <laughs> yes, from experience. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're gonna find where that middle point is, that V, and we're gonna match it up with the V on our um, top bodice. And you will have, it should overlap, it should hang down a little bit, like a quarter inch. Um, that will help once it's sewn together. So what I'm gonna do is right there, I'm just going to put a pin um, because that way it'll stay right at that point where I want it and then we're going to pivot down over to the side and we're going to attach right sides together those raw edges of your bodice A and B and once again just like you did for the back you're going to have a little bit hang a little bit of hang out a quarter inch hang out right here at the edge at the edge of that top bodice because you want that to be there again for your seam allowance and all that good stuff so it lines up super hyper mega crisp okay now there's two ways of doing this and i am the easy uh you know kind of lazy person that does it the fast way you can go on we'll do this part with a sewing machine and reason being we'll do a sewing machine first and then you can serge it if you want um, so that we can get that really sharp V. We want it to look really nice. And it's sometimes it's easier to handle when you're doing it on your sewing machine. So you can either do a basting stitch. If you say, I don't want to have that sewing stitch there. I don't want to do a stretch stitch because my machine hates stretch stitching. Um, so if you want to do that, then you can do a basting stitch and then go over with your serger and sew those seams and then pull that basting stitch out later. Or you can just go ahead and just do a stretch stitch on your sewing machine and once you top stitch it, which is what I, I'm going to do, once you top stitch it, it'll cover up those raw edges so it won't, it will be like finished. Um, or you can go back and serge if you don't have a cover stitch and you want to serge. And, or, I have also the Elo Flex that stretch thread and you can just use that as a stretch stitch on your sewing, a straight stitch on your sewing machine. And that's actually what I am doing. Um, I like the look of that better. Um, and then once I top stitch it, like I said, the seam allowance will be under my top stitching so you will be able to even see it. 
Um, I do have a review on that, Elo Flex and how you sew a top with just that uh, thread. This is not sponsored or anything anyway, uh, by the way, just so you know. Uh, but I do, it, I do like it, so it's on there um, if you want to go check that out. So the two options I was saying before I got carried away about the different kind of stitches is you can either go ahead and place each side and sew one side up and get to the middle and then come back and then line the other side up and sew from the edge to the middle. You can do that. Um, what I'm going to do, like I said, the lazy way is I'm going to go up one side, stop at the middle with my needle, pivot my fabric Put my, uh, lift my needle down, sorry. Lift my needle down, lift my foot, pivot my fabric, put my foot down, and go the, and keep going the other way. It's what I'm going to do. Um, I just, like I said, you all know I like to just go ahead and go for it quickly. And I think that that's easier for me and I, I it worked fine for me before, so that's what I'm doing. Um, if you're worried about, like I said, that V being really, really sharp, you can top stitch first. There's nothing wrong with top stitching at first. Top stitching that V first and then going back and doing the whole thing. That's fine. Um, and if you want that really sharp look. Um, so it just takes a little bit of practice. Let's go ahead and do this. All right, so I am back to just a regular stitch um, on my sewing machine because like I said, I am using that stretchy thread, Eloflex. Um, remember I said you're gonna have a quarter inch, it's a little bit more than a quarter inch, well no, right there, a quarter inch like piece hang out at the end um, and that's there on purpose and then we're doing um, quarter inch seam allowance because that's what's on our pattern, this is what this pattern calls for and we're gonna go all the way, making sure those edges are lined up. All right, when I get to the V, I'm going to go ahead and lift up my foot and pivot and go down the other way. Continue to go down all the way. All right, now I steam the back and we're gonna go ahead and top stitch it. You do not have to top stitch, but I just like the look of the top stitching. And I'm just gonna do the same thing I did with my back where I pivot at the center and go all the way to the other side. Alrighty, time for sleeves. Our front is done. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my front face up on my mat and then I'm gonna grab the sleeves and I'm gonna put them face down. So with the raglan style, it's really easy to tell which one is which side of the sleeve because look, it's longer on one side. So you know for sure that's not the side that it needs to be on. Um, it's gotta be the side that it obviously fits on. So don't like overstretch, like don't try to stretch your fabric to fit um, because you you know, if, if it looks like there's a lot of rim on there and you're like, okay, this does not look right, it is not right. You're right, follow your gut on that and we're gonna do it on the other side. So we'll put them right sides together and sew those raw edges. Do the same thing for the other side. Now you can go ahead and sew that up first if you want to and then come back and sew the um, back to the sleeves but I like to just do it all at once. So I do this side and then uh, pin it and then what I do is I'll go ahead and pin the back to it already too so that way I can just sew them all at the same time. Um, does it save time? I don't know, maybe a little bit. I'm not really sure that it saves a whole lot of time, but I just feel like I get more done when I do it this way. Probably not. But um, I'm also going to tell you that, I always forget to tell you, so I wanted to tell you right now before I forget. I am using French Terry, so all these colors are um, French Terry, different, ver different um, colors of French Terry. I think I said French Terry like 10 times in that one little, amount of time. I am I love French terry and I love French terry for all type of seasons. This is a lighter French terry which has a really good stretch. It's more like a baby French terry. Um, kind of thin and fluffy. There are so many different kinds of French terries out there that you just really need to read your description when you're purchasing it. I got this French terry from Olga's Closet as well as the French terry that's, that you're seeing on this straight fit raglan. Um, and that, that French terry that Elle is wearing um, also is from Olga's Closet. She's wearing the um, crossover top. Super cute. Anyway, and so um, 
it's a lighter French terry with which has a lot of stretch. Now there are some French terries that don't have much stretch. There are some that are like fleece lined, which I made the mistake of ordering some fleece lined uh, French terry a few years ago. I did not realize it was fleece lined because I did not read my description on my fabric. But it was okay because I ended up making a really cute Tuesday hoodie with it and it's um, awesome, super comfy, super cute, super cozy. But um, what I'm trying to say is, <laughs> all that to say, if you're purchasing fabric online, make sure you read your description where it's going to tell you what kind of um, stretch it has, it's going to tell you kind of what what what's the content on the fabric and stuff like that don't make my mistake uh, and, um, and also to tell you that I use French Terry for all this because all right, so let's sew the sleeves on. All right, now that our sleeves are on, we're gonna sew our sides together, right sides together. So match up those seams and those outer seams um, and sew them right sides together. time for neckband um, sometimes I like to go ahead and give this neckband a memory crease before I get started with what I'm doing so I'm gonna fold it wrong sides together and just give it a light memory crease um, which is just really a little steam a little blast of steam um, to kind of when I saw it together on the round it kind of I already have that line so let's do that. Not necessary, but I just like to do it. Then I'm gonna go ahead and grab it and open it up. And we're gonna place those two raw edges, the pointy raw edges together. And we're gonna sew um, a straight stitch, a half, a quarter inch, sorry, in. So we're gonna go down to the point, up to the top. Um, with a quarter inch seam allowance, you can mark that point right there so you know exactly where your middle piece is, your, your V is right here, and we're gonna create, that's gonna create this V neckband. And then we're gonna go over here where our top is, our V right here, and we're gonna sew a straight stitch an, uh, an inch away from the point down and up like we did at the bodice um, to kind of stabilize it a little bit. Now, a lot of times your sewing machine may not like just this little bit of fabric. So if you wanna put some stabilizing paper underneath it or something like that to like help it not eat the fabric, that will be, sometimes that's really good help with some sewing machines. So let's go sew that. All right, so I'm doing a regular straight stitch, straight stitch on this one quarter inch seam allowance and we're going and stopping right at that V remove that pin and pivot down you want to use thread that's like the same color as your um, fabric because when you open it up sometimes you can if you when you pull the tension you might be able to see a little bit of that peaking thread through and you don't want that so as you can see right here i'm gonna go ahead and clip that piece right there which we were supposed to do in our bodice too and i totally forgot to mention now i'll mention it now which you're like what uh, that v you can trim that right there up to the line to help you pivot it better and there is your v-neck. I'm gonna go back and steam this open, the seam allowance open. That way it'll sit nice and flat and re-steam where I did that memory steam earlier, remember? And that's our neckband. Very nice. And then now I'm gonna make my stitch longer and I'm just gonna base that V right here at our neck. That way it will have, you know, it will help with stability and such. Whoop, I went way too far. So I'm gonna redo it. Here we go. Once again, only to the point. And then pivot. It's about an inch. I did more than an inch, but that's okay. All right, 
So then um, we're going to go ahead and put our neckband on. Let me show you over there, it's easier actually. All right, so our neckband, I'm gonna open up, like I said, this seam allowance right here and steam it down to like lessen the bulk. Then I'm gonna go ahead and match them up and steam again where we made that memory crease. So, okay, here's my point. I'm just gonna clip some of these threads out of the way. All right, so here's my front point. So this is my back. So I'm just gonna make a little mark on it. Like I like to do a little notch, something that's gonna get eaten when I have my seam allowance, but it's marked. I'm gonna go to the front, front and back, go to one side, we're quartering our neck band, and then um, do the same on the other side. And then we're gonna do the same to our actual bodice, quarter that bodice. We're gonna grab our shoulders, our sleeves, and go to the back. There's already a seam there, and there's a V at the front, so we already have our front and back marks. We're gonna match up the front and the back and go to the side because our shoulders are not right the middle of the sleeve. See how much room there is in the back and a little bit in the front? If you go by the middle of the sleeve, then um, your neckband will not be even. You want an even neckband. All right, so once I did that now, I'm gonna get rid of all these little extra threads right here because because I am sewing the neckband on and all these serge edges will be eaten, um, I don't need to have them right there. They're just getting in my way and annoy me. All right, so we're gonna match up. See that point right here, that V point? We're gonna put that V point right at our V point of our bodice and again, like we did our top at the bottom, it's gonna overlap a little bit. See how there's a little bit like a, a quarter inch hanging out at the bottom? That is what you want. Um, that way you can have that sharp V right there. And I'm going to use a pin to mark it right here. Okay. And we're going to sew first an inch right here. Um, so up a quarter inch seam allowance we're gonna sew up stop pivot sew down to sew that neckband V on first and then we'll serge it on because you want to go ahead and sew that first and make sure it's nice and lined up with a straight, a straight, uh, straight stitch first like a basting stitch that way if it doesn't look nice and lined up you can pull that basting stitch out, try again. But if you go ahead and serge it on without basting it, then it's harder to take a serge off. You can, but it's a little bit harder. So that's why we wanna go ahead and baste it on first. All right, so here we are. We're gonna grab our fabric, right sides together, right here. Match up your neckband and your bodice. And we're gonna start, like I said, an inch away from the V point quarter inch seam allowance, go down, go all the way to the middle of your neckband. Stop, leave your needle down, lift up your foot and pivot your neckband. Make sure your fabric is not getting caught like all the other fabrics, just your neckband and your bodice are there. Put your foot down and go about an inch. And our V is sewn. See that? Nicely sewn. Okay, and now we're gonna match up our quarter points of our neckband, steel right sides together. Match up those quarter points. And then I can go to my serger and start from here and go sewing my neckband on all the way around and come right back out to the edge. I like to always sew with my neckband face up to make sure I'm catching it just right. And then once that's situated, let me make sure that the whole thing is right by going to, whoops, 
All right, it wasn't situated. Get it situated. Sometimes I like to make sure my needle is in there. Okay, and then um, grab your first quarter point and line up your band and so. Now at the end, when we're coming around, we're just gonna go straight and come right off at that V point. Right here. All right, our neck band is done. That wasn't too hard, was it? All right, so next is our cuffs. If you're making cuffs, if you're not, you're just gonna go ahead and hem. We're gonna grab our cuff, I'm gonna fold it right sides together, and I'm going to sew up this raw edge just real quick over at my serger. Um, or, you know, sew a machine, whatever you're using. Now I'm gonna grab the cuff, now that it's like on a round, and I'm fold it wrong sides together to create that cuff. And instead of quartering, I just half my cuff. You can quarter it if you want to. I just find that half is enough for me. Um, so I go from the back seam to the front right here and make that half and do the same for the other one. And then I'm gonna grab my sleeve and I'm gonna fit my cuff right into my sleeve and match up my seam over here and then my front. Now the only reason why I know which one my front is because I steamed it already, kind of like a crease. So I already have a crease there, but you can go ahead and mark it now, if you want to put more pins in there for quarters, you can do that. Make it easier on you and your sewing. And do that for both. We're going to go over and sew that on. I am also, while we're over here on the other side, go ahead and hem. And if you want to top stitch your uh, neckband, you may do so. I might try it. I'm always so scared to top stitch my neckband, though. I feel like my neckband looks good, and then if I top stitch it, I might mess it up. But then if it looks, if it turns out, then it looks really good. So, so I'm always like, should I do it? Should I not? What should I do? I think I'm gonna go for it. I love how it turned out, like how it looks on this one. So that's why I'm like, okay, maybe I need to go for it. Um, and then uh, your hem at the bottom, we can go ahead and take care of that as well while we're there. So I do use a cover stitch for my hemming. I know this kind of looks like a serger, but it's not my serger, it's a cover stitch. But it's just, it's a brother cover stitch. Alrighty friends, we are done with our top. How cute is this? I love it. I love all the color blocking details. I actually think the colors look good. I was a little bit worried. I wanted this top to be a lighter gray, like, cause these are all kind of grayish, um, but I didn't have that. So I went with the uh, cream color and I think it does look good. What do you think? Let me know. Please comment, like, share, subscribe if you haven't. Let me know if you have any questions below. Please come follow us on Facebook and Instagram where we have a great community and you can ask questions for any patterns and you can see what everybody else is sewing and be inspired and then inspire us with your sew. So come share. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'm gonna go try this on and show it all to you and I'll see you all next time. Bye.